Yo, if you play control mages or generally mid lane, this video is for you. I will make sure to get you to the next level with all of the concepts that my students are paying me to teach them. So enjoy the video, let me know how did you like it and let's get something amazing out of it. Okay, so let's start the game. Something funny will really happen. I will just teleport level one. I wanted to type don't worry and instead I just teleported uh, Eloy's master theory if you guys wonder. The items and the runes I will explain in a moment. Now about the matchup. So the matchup is Seraphin. I thought it's Oriana. Generally when we play control mage versus control mage they usually don't fight that much with you and if they're long range you can't really get a scorch value so what i'm going this game you will see on the screen i went scorch but i thought it's oriana normally i would go gathering because it's not that much about trading it's more about wave management and making sure you get the most consistent resets early on uh, you are just trading from time to time but when they have abnormal wave clear it's just more about the wave concepts and the tempo the I found that there was no boots, magical footwear. There was no magical footwear because I want when they have a lot of skill shots and generally they have the champions that have good picks. I prefer to get boots earlier into the game to ensure the movement speed will keep me safer. As well, when they are double AP mid in the jungle, I don't go magical footwear so I can get mercs early on into the game after lost chapter, for example. This game I thought it's Oriana. And I just wanted to have this movement speed earlier to dodge her ball better and stuff to re reposition myself. I couldn't sadly because of, you know, like this is Seraphine, but still the choice was okay. Normally I just go Futures Market and the, um, and the Magical Footwear. I prefer to be as greedy as possible. Comet versus Ranged. Comet versus Ranged and uh, Airy versus Melee because that's where I can poke them more. You will see the amount of the time I could poke the Seraphine wasn't that much. And because I burn my TP, <coughs> the game plan level one is I really fight and contest the push hard so I can ensure to get a better reset without being forced, where I won't get d -nate. Why I started the Mana Crystal is because I'm playing against Seraphine. The guy can't really threaten me that much into the early game, so I prefer to rush my lost chapter. So I, I really hard push, as you see. To get level two before the guy and to ensure that i can as i said get the reset before the opponent so i'm completely ignoring him of course from time to time pressing the e to get a mana flow bent on the guy is cool but right now it's just the pressure under me without the tp so i gotta make sure i can set up the reset i get w level two to ensure my push is still Keeping up, W, void, Poison connected with the Voidlings gives you the most value. I'm hovering most far away from the opponent. I'm never standing, as you saw before, front to front. I'm standing like, if this is this, I'm like this. Wait, do you see? I think so, yeah. I'm never standing like this, front to front. If he's right, I'm left. If he's left, I'm right. This way, I ensure my position is the best. If it comes to the mindset, of the early gaming, gaming as a Malzahar is you gotta keep up with the consistency, make sure that you manage your waves well. You need to ask yourself realistically, can you even kill the opponent to use the spells on him? Otherwise, it's more that you focus on efficient wave clearing. And you can see Seraphin is slowly going out of mana. And I know that. That's why I'm really focusing on, on the wave because this guy won't slowly keep up with me. And even if he pokes me, I completely don't mind because if he pokes me, I would ask him if I was coaching him, like, okay, you poke me, but can this really help you kill me? No, you just don't have enough burst. Look, look, I'm looking for a cannon reset to get my lost chapter and fix my teleport mistake. You see, so I'm looking in how many ways the cannon will be. That's every third wave. Now, if this guy pokes me, watch carefully. I don't care if he would poke me because he can't kill me. He doesn't have enough stuff. So I'm like, good luck, bro. You know, I'm like, good luck, bro. Keep poking me. I'm just going to shove the wave and I reset for free because the next wave is here. I just silence a little bit to make sure that the, my, my guys can do something with the guy. Now I have a cannon wave coming. That's the perfect reset guys to obtain. And that's how I saved my ass without the TP. And Seraphine was generally trolling. I've written he have no brain. That's not toxic. Didn't mean to be toxic. It just that like he should have as well prioritized the wave and look for a good reset. Right now the wave met on the center of the wave. It's a handshake, which means basically that it will be pushing equally. 
it will push equally, guys, to the both sides. So right now I lost the cannon, but as well she loses the cannon, and I was really hoping for that. We got lost chapter in the format of the game, 28 CS. Everything is going pretty well for now. If you wonder about the mindset, well, what can we do if I can't kill opponent as a Malza Exblade Mojo? My friend, you gotta keep the prio with the wave, keep the good vision to make so make sure you are not gonna get abused by the jungler, and you will be looking for opportunities on the map to let's say give a dragon prio, to give a herald prio. But usually your main game starts from the level six. That's where you can look for more of a peaks. Away from that, you can see I'm like just purely focusing on the efficient wave clear. Realistically, I'm focusing on efficient wave clear. And the game is really, I would say, slow pace on the mid. There is not much going on. Do you remember if the wave is coming to the wave, uh, to the turret, you can use the void links to block the wave a little bit so it will reach to the turret later or not at all until the next wave arrives. <clears throat> and I already give a comment, level 6 we win. Why? Because she flashed on the last play. So I'm making sure my Hikarim knows that I have, have a, when I have my 6, so we can abuse the guy. And still, am I worried about mana? No. If you won't spam your Q on the opponent and you will just maintain, use it to maintain the wave, you usually won't lose mana at all, especially on the lost chapter. Expect Mojo, what about the tier? What about the tier, bro? Like, if you go tier, it means you are spamming Q before level 6, like the Seraphine spammed her spells, so you can't manage the wave, so you need to go the tier. Generally, Archangel takes you Rylai slot, if you wanna go Archangel second. You just don't wanna. Rylai is too important. And then third item is either Void Staff or Zonia. So you can't stress enough to delay from the Archangel to Rylai on the third slot. You understand? Because then, fourth slot will be Void Staff or Zonia, that's so late, bro. Generally, just not needed. At least that's my opinion. And from experience that I have played with hundreds of games of Malzahar on the Master Tier plus, plus experience, which is quite consistent LO, let's say. Uh, the game plan is still the same. We are keep on pushing. Uh, I already noticed that uh, Seraphine must have resetted, so I'm just, or she's helping with the dragon, so I'm just setting up an efficient reset. And what we are doing on the lane is like an efficient ping pong. Ping pong, ping pong, ping pong. And between this time, I go Dark Seal plus Boots, Boots to get to, to get this early movement speed and Dark Seal because I was hoping that we can get potential pick on the Seraphine with my alt. <clears throat> Normally you would just go Fiendish Codex and you wouldn't stress. Uh, and now I was encouraging the Hecarim, but he preferred to counter jungle for the Udyr Dragon, which is okay, we adapt. I'm just, I just taken a look, short look on the bot side to see if I would need to TP to the turret just in case, yeah. And really important thing is you need to pay attention when you what is your laner up to do. She helped with the dragon, she came back to shove the wave, so <clears throat> I knew she wants to reset. Ask yourself what opponent wants to do. He wanted to reset. And look, before I ensure I will keep on pressuring him and keep him hostage, because that's what you want to do when you know they didn't reset for a while, I make sure I have some vision to back myself up. Yeah, that was really important. And now expand the fog of war, look to stop the guys. Yeah, like this I did on the Seraphine. Heck, I went really deep. Udir already reset it, started from the top side. I'm trying to back up the guy and I shouldn't actually back up the guy. I tried to a bit kite him. I missed my Q, but it's still the guy wouldn't die anyway. So <coughs> that's how I died. That was a bit awkward, honestly, because the game, game-wise, it was going well for the mid. Because I had Perma Prior over the Seraphine that would force I would force to her TP. I would burn her TP by perma shoving on her, and I would just generally win with my prior all the time. But for this play, we threw this so much. You know, we just threw it so much. And I knew that, but I'm not toxic. I just type, oh, yikes, yikers, and we're gonna shove to implement the pressure one more time. So generally, once you get your lost chapter as Malzahar, what you wanna do is you wanna <coughs> look for shoves, shoving the waves with efficient vision, and between this time, with vision, basically with vision. Between the time, between the waves, you wanna check what can you do on the map. If of course cannon is full health, we're not gonna overforce it. I ping the Herald, but now he can't just casually jump to the Herald because we need to figure out if Seraphine will push the mid or if he, if she will join to the Herald. As well, the prior on the cannon, the prior on the cannon was better. Because if I draw you this, cannon had this line of the wave, so he could join faster. Hecarim could potentially start it, 
pull it maximally, then we can take a look to consider. I pinged him and I was like, you know what? Holy fuck, maybe I shouldn't ping at all because this guy doesn't understand, didn't understand my intention, you know? So that was like what I thought at this moment, actually. <clears throat> and now, yeah, we are, we are hard losing, guys. I'm trying to keep up with the consistency. I'm just really sad about the play that had a place on the Raptor pit because that was my fault. I wanted to follow this up, right? <clears throat> but you need to really see what will happen later on in this game because that will show you you can win any kind of game in League of Legends as long as you stay strong mentally. Right now, I'm shoving one more because there is no objective on the map, so I'm not worried about the tempo. What will happen when I reset? Seraphine will already be back on the lane, but she cannot deny me because there is no wave. She could potentially roam. But my top laner is dead, bot lane is completely okay, there is no objective on the map. So I'm willing to overstay one more wave because nothing bad can happen, yeah? So that's basically how it is. Now we're gonna go up, I think, missing because now... Actually, now she can rotate before me for this one cannon wave. So that is the price of me committing for one more wave. It's okay sometimes to overcommit for one more wave, but you need to really understand the price. Like, what is the potential price of that one more wave? That's how I explained you right now, and people really pay me to explain those those things, yeah? So it's even good to open the notepad and, like, start pointing out what x Mojo is saying. Now, generally, after I shove the wave, I'm trying to a bit back up here on the river, if nothing happens, slowly, we do it slowly. If, if there is no ROM timer, I mean, okay, you might have a time for ROM timer, but it doesn't mean you have to take it because not every ROM timer, bro, will be good. So that's how it, co so you need to sharpen the game sense with the ROM timers, you know, that's how it is basically. Now the goal, if I can't find anything on the map, the goal is that we're gonna play for the Leandris. What you need to see is what side of the map right now we're gonna be playing for. I draw you the line. Dragon is spawning in 30 seconds from now. That's gonna be the objective that we'll play a lot for. I'm not saying we're gonna contest it, but we need to be aware what side realistically is gonna be the next play going on. Yeah? That's how it is right now. Right now I really fast show and I'm looking for Leandris. If I sell the potion, I should have it. Unlucky with this minion, but I'm still trying to set up really fast reset. And I know I don't have TP for a dragon, but... Okay, I stayed one more. Because it was not a cannon wave. And if I reset it here, I would have lost full wave. So that's why basically we stayed one more. To set up this cannon wave. Yeah, so one, two, three. After the second wave that is not a cannon wave, you recall. And the third one is a cannon, the one that is on your way. I will probably check it. I see no cannon wave. I'm starting to reset and I wonder if I will actually finish the reset. Because that wasn't a cannon wave. Yeah, you see? I stayed and I know we're gonna do dragon. Yeah, but am I trolling with it? No. Because can you contest the dragon with this amount of the pressure? Look, there is this, there is this, there is this line. Enemy territory right now is like this. Bro, you can't ever contest this dragon, just forget it. So right now I'm just shoving one more. Meanwhile, when... She was a bit backing up the dragon. Then once the wave is done, we're gonna reset on the cannon wave and you're not gonna lose anything. I just want the wave realistically. Sadly, my, my E didn't bounce, so I need to help myself with the void link. That's pretty funny. Look, he's like my little little bro, basically, right now. And now we set up cannon recall. I get my Leandris. I'm 120 CS, more CS than her. After I died, if I didn't die, I would be like 130 right now. And at least what you need to be good at is CS in Kasmal Zahar. You don't have to be insanely proactive. I mean, you need to see the opportunities on the map. But number one thing is, start with getting this turbo efficiency wave-wise, reset-wise, and CS-wise. Yeah, That's how we actually get the potential to carry the games later on. So I'm shoving the wave. <clears throat> and I know I have a timer over Seraphin. The guy is resetting right now. So I'm going to hard shove the next one to implement the pressure on this guy. After this, let's. I will explain you. I'm checking if top lane is gun, if top lane is gun cable. It's not. This guy is still completely doomed. He's gonna be zero ten this game. If I remember, I'm not sure. I wanted just a plate, but I need to be careful. We have good vision to the bot side, so I hover to the bot side. You always wanna hover to the side that you have awards. The really common mistake that I see with my Mazahar students is that they <clears throat> really hard push and they don't work properly for themselves and that's usually when the problem starts for them yeah so you really need to ensure the vision because tier one turret bot lane got taken enemy bot 
lane, ADC and support rotated to mid to keep up the pressure on me and to get potential mid turret. Mid turret is the best into the game in the game because it opens the full forest. So right now I'm just making sure <coughs> we can keep this up. I wanted the blue buff, but I didn't want to steal it. But I knew like if I want to maintain this, I want to steal it. But just didn't want to be greedy, you know. Uh, generally mid pressure is even. I wanted to go bot lane, but I saw Seraphine wasn't bot lane, so I didn't overforce. Now we without the vision went really deep, and I I'm really not comfortable with this. So I was trying to a bit back up my team. Normally I would go bot lane and push the side lane with my teleport because if I have this, I can be most far away with the team from the team, a as long as they can defend the mid. If they can't defend the mid, I'm gonna stay and back this up because I really don't wanna give this turret for free. This turret is insanely valuable for us. I went Ionian. I wanted to go Sorcerers this game, just so you know. But I went Ionian because if if I had both, I had both summoner spells up. So my TP, next TP is gonna be faster. My next flash is gonna be faster. If I had them on the CD, I would buy Sorcerers. Normally, with the depth. And because I'm the only AP champion in the game, so this is really low risk factor of them stacking magic resist and sorcerers are the best when uh, opponents have low magic resist. So when they are not stacking it, right? Now I'm checking if Kennen is flanking us, if he wants to dive us. So I was just backing up. And yeah, look, it's unplayable for now. And Kennen is actually coming. Little bro is coming. I'm trying to do the silence to zone them a bit so they can't approach the... When they wanna FF already, I'm just gatekeeping. Hekarim is at least farming. We have, we are completely losing. Even though it's seven, seven to eleven, they have winning bot. They have winning top. Mid lane is even, so it doesn't matter when they have top winning bot. Me being even doesn't matter, at least not yet. But you will see what happens later on into this game. Right now, I'm just gonna reset. There is not much to do on the map, so we just reset. They just. Jax lost in a really stupid concept. I can draw you this. So look, this is where the waves were on the mid. Yeah, you see? So this line measures you a bit more how is the territory on the map. So if they show this like this, they can go like this and like this and kill this guy. Same like there. Yeah, like territory concept is something that I teach my students. Not any kind of coach doesn't talk the way that I do about it. Um, if you guys are interested to understand more of those concepts, to get better understanding, just hit me up on the Discord for the coaching session, all roles, all champions, then I can teach you a really good macro. And you will see this game, how we win, with good macro, with good respect and adaptation. What is the game plan x module when the game is so doomed? <laughs> well, my friend, playing around enemy mistakes and keeping up with the consistency and proper rotations. So right now, I got mid wave, I'm gonna go catch the top wave, unless the Jax will TP. I checked if the guy have TP, because Dragon is spawning in 40. He TP it, so we don't have TP for the Dragon. So now the another question comes up is, if can we really contest this Dragon? Remember, you can give even up to the free Dragons if you guys are scaling. Malza is scaling, Wayne is scaling, Hekarim is scaling. Can we give this Dragon if needed? Yes, bro, we can. We can give this third Dragon because we can still stay in the game and potentially win it later on. So that's the thought process here. I'm just gonna ensure to catch the mid wave, but I'm not really fan of right now committing for this Dragon. We'll see what happens, especially look at the Jax. Jax is on the top side. Enemy jungler might have TP. Pike is generally forcing without the vision. We didn't see a single person. You know, like that was not the best go in. I don't want to be a hater, but no joke. Like there was only two people visible. He went in YOLO with Malzaharon, Yandris and Ionians. I'm sorry, bro. I'm, my champion isn't yet that strong as you think it was. So we give it, guys. Give third one, play for the soul. I want to pee so badly, but we will survive this. So now what we can do, if you can't contest the dragon, is you can implement the pressure on the mid, then you need to ride to the opposite side that they were in, which was dragon, right? So we keep on running. I try to zone again with my Q. And watch, we got a pick on the Orianna. Sadly, I didn't have my R. I have really low mana. So I'm just trying to silence and provide some utility. But I can't do much more than that. The beginning was going good, but cannon flank us. And we didn't notice it. It was our bet, of course. And I said my bet because I as well went with the play and I didn't expect cannon. I didn't think about the cannon. Jax, meanwhile, is at least like being greedy, 
guy on the bot lane to get back to the game. I'm checking like some stuff. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm like curious what I'm doing. I don't know, bro. Um, I don't know what was this. Like I just died and I had like Vietnam flashbacks, bro. If I like, uh, uh, like my re previous ranks or something. I don't know. Don't ask me about it. That was funny. But if you ask, if you wonder if I'm angry, no. But I just really want to have a quality game. So I'm keep on trying. I'm not angry on the game. Uh, the opponent's next goal of the map, if I draw you the line, right, is the <clears throat> Nashor in 30 seconds. So a lot of play on the map will be about top and mid push. Can we really contest it? Well, not really. We are still waiting for opponents to make some kind of mistake where we can actually get a good fight. <clears throat> I was here a bit angry. Why? Because my mindset was I want to get solo XP on the bot lane side lane and I have TP to back up the Nashor. I don't want 0-5 Jax to get like a chat all of the side lane waves. But as well, if I put this Jax mid, for example, you know, or top lane, mm. he's not as useful as I am with the silences and the alts to kill my team. And it wasn't actually as bad as I thought it is. But look, I knew Cannon is coming and those guys again overcome it really deeply. No need, because we are still scaling. It didn't actually go went so bad. The only thing I could do is to zone the Cannon, but I'm not going to suicide along with them because that will cost me the consistency in this game. So I'm not going to do it, simply. They might Nashor, I agree. They might just Nashor it. I'm getting the top side wave, then we'll even see if we, if we can... If we can contest this back, of course the flip that we taken wasn't good, bro. It wasn't. So let's see how this will happen. Light is pretty good. <coughs> okay, watch this. <coughs> I'm zoning the Seraphine and Aphelios, and I'm hoping my team can do well on the other side. We are. I'm holding two carries right now. They are a bit scared. Dancing with them. I was hoping that Hekarim can as well back up my other teammates, but it went okay. I just R. Why no E? Why no W? W I could press, I agree. But I pressed R Insta to make sure she won't flash away just to ensure I can lock her so we can get her. And that's how enemy throw. I don't know how actually Jax, Wayne, and Pike played, but I think they did something really amazing behind me to even win this. I was zoning them two people, so they had a free versus free, realistically. Yeah, Kennen. Udir and the other person. Cannon, I don't know, whatever. But you know, it just they did something really good. We could just ping it. I was hoping that Hekarim could a bit help back up the team there. Uh, by the way, Pike was one second death timer till the Nashor and Hekarim didn't wait for him. He could just wait one or two seconds and Pike would get the Nashor buff, yeah? Uh, Riley second for the utility to kite opponents. Ryla is amazing to as well provide self peel for yourself and be like a kiting with your spells person. Uh, moreover about the... Look, Pike doesn't have an Asher buff, you see? Now, what's the goal of the map? I ask you. Look, I draw you the line. What's the goal of the map? Nash Dragon. So now what we need to prepare? We need to prepare top and the bot and you want to create like a box like this. This is your priority. We are fighting right now for the territory on the bot side. So ensure the mid push and the bot push is correct. That's how you can even consider contesting it. I will go third item Zonia because they have a lot of ultimates that can pick me. Zonia, uh, sorry, Oriana alt, uh, Seraphine alt, Aphelios alt, Cannon alt. So I go Zonia to counter those big broken ultimates. We are keeping the ground. I see they are fighting. Normally, if they wouldn't, weren't fighting, I would push the one more mid wave. But because they fight, I'm making sure I can cover those guys. Here it's gonna be something pretty funny. Look, that's Oriana. She just alted me. This bitch. Cover the bot side. In my opinion, they do a bit too much right now. Not necessary because we had a really good Nashor ground. And I'm recalling because I have TP, so I can recall and I can TP for the Dragon. I was thinking if I should TP directly, but I wanted to actually push one more mid wave. But then I got scared of the Udir and of the fight that had a place. Normally, I would insta shove the mid wave. I was just like with the mindset, better prevent than treat. You know what I mean? Just so you prevent just in case, then you shove. Normally, if you was sure nothing bad happens, you just push the wave mid wave. Amazing, yeah? Now we have great sideline pressure on the bot lane and we have good sideline pressure. We have good pressure on the mid. I art this guy instantly. He face checked me. I did Zonia to block the alt damage. It wasn't like perfect, but it works. 
I did Q in front of the cannon, so I like create with my Q often, if you wonder why I do it. I think I want my Q like a wall. So when they want to go on me, I create the wall in front of them, so they cannot go on me. When he's split pushing, I'm keeping the mid pressure. I'm pretty safe. I know where they are. So we are just building the pressure on the sidelines right now. <clears throat> pretty soon it's going to be reset. Not much to do. Right now I would like to reset. 500 gold, not, not the healthiest. But then I see Hecarim is building a good pressure. Bot is building bo good pressure. So it would be a shame not to implement one more mid pressure. So you need to really synergize with the wa waves. Guys, the League of Legends is not only about mechanics, it's as well about what you see on the minimap and how you synergize with your team, how you respond to what they do. And now I'm typing play slow. That will help us a lot because one good team fight, healthy team fight without being picked, and they were forcing before in the early game, my team. I'm then play slow because one good slow team fight and we really get this W into our pocket, you know? So let's see how this will be going, guys. For now, it's pretty chill, right? You see that yourself. <coughs> when he's getting the bot lane side lane, I'm trying to cover this guy, but he already got one shot at like a worm. And what to do generally? Generally, you know what to do when the map is so stagnant. Map map is a progression. Now the, the easier start to take is the tier to mid. But the main play, if I draw you the line, I think you already understand the concept. The cr there is a dragon and baron, right? We're gonna play pretty soon around this, and that's gonna be deciding play of the map. That's gonna be basically the Nashor. Okay, watch, there is probably some kind of fight going on from the flank. I wanted to go both wave, and then I see they are fighting, so I try to back them up. Generally, I don't really wanna fight because I know <coughs> the Nashor will be the play. At the same time, I wanna go both, but I don't have TP. Then I realize Jax is flanking. Could I go a bit faster with my team? Yes, I agree. My map awareness could be way faster here. But I, I was hesitating. I agree completely. Look, he goes and I ult him. Why? Because he went too close. In the team fights, it's not that you will always ult the carry, bro. That's naturally, rationally impossible. You will ult the person that you guys can take down. Can take down the fastest. Or you will ult the carry. But you can't ult the carry if the carries are surrounded by three other DPS people in the back lane, right? So it's all really dynamic. I'm just checking the time if it's recording. Everything is good. Now I'm going side lane, and in one minute from now, we're gonna be playing for the Nashor side. That's our goal of the map. So now I'm just out pushing the side lane, making sure the <coughs> making sure the side lane pressure is healthy. My teammates got picked. And was this fight necessary? No, not necessary. Because in a 50 seconds from now, we have a deciding fight of the game. Guys, please don't <laughs> don't fight like this. Just choose objective and play for objectives and decide the games on those objectives. No need to flip right now, especially when you're winning, when you start to win, yeah? I just did, did one more wave, why? FTP, 30 seconds to the Nashor, I can make it in time. So, and I wanted the Zonias. And I, I perfectly counted the Zonia, I need to wait 50 more gold. So I'm gonna wait, I will make it in time, then I have TP for the Dragon. And I really can't stress enough to not have my stopwatch, the Zonia usage, for this essential fight. So I write, I wait for TG. I'm looking for a water sponsor for the videos. Hit me up. Then I'm going to show you it like this during the videos. Okay, now I'm setting up for the preparing to buy the Zonia. Then we're going to get to outpush the mid. And <clears throat> why it's not going to be about Nashor? Opponents want to secure the Dragon. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shift actually to play for the dragon. It's more consistent, easier objective. And there is a fight going on. <coughs> a bit too soon. Remember, always push mid first, then join dragon from the side. That's way more consistent. It's way better than fucking flipping through the forest like Hekarim did. I think Hekarim and uh, Pike are duo. Joke, of course, but you know what I mean. Here I'm just doing the wall cues to, to block them. They got picked. I thought it can be actually lost game here. <laughs> but luckily they didn't finish. So one thing we should do is we should outpush the mid properly, wait for opponents to walk to the dragon pit, then we could potentially consider then we could potentially consider to act on that dragon. But we face check the jungle, then Pike went too fast. But this pike doesn't have much of a follow-up, especially without the jacks. 
Actually, from what I remember, they didn't go soul, they were really greedy and they went Nashor, or am I tripping? Let's figure this out in a moment. I have my TP and I was pinging Pike Wards, but he was so much into the fight that whatever. I wouldn't need to TP anyway after this play, yeah? So we are walking. And now this is gonna be something pretty funny, you know? They wanted the soul, but at the same time bot lane wave is pushing. So someone will need to catch bot wave pretty soon. We outpush the top side. And now we're gonna force the Nashor. I know enemy jungler is not there, but look, Jax actually is 200 IQ. Because because Jack, Jax stayed there, he gave us the time to force the Nashor. And we are losing really hard, so <coughs> it was okay to start this Nashor. I just pinged it like... a. I was pumping like crazy, like a madman, bro. Because we had to try it, and I'm glad this Jax gave us so much time. Look, they need to push the top, they need to push the bot lane. That's why we went for it. We have to risk in this game. It's not easy game. I'm just trying to peel. Watch, watch. Just peel. Your carry. If you can't get anyone else, just peel. R into silence. Perma silence. And I, I ulted the Udir so he couldn't start the Wayne. And because he couldn't stand the Wayne, she had the E to stand the cannon. And enjoy the peel. Now, that is the item mojo. Void stuff. Void stuff. Generally, you see the person that I'm dealing the most during the fight is the Udir. <clears throat> and Udir is quite tanky person. The rest is quite, quite squishy. Could I go Rabadon? I mean, it will take me ages, bro, to finish the Rabadon. So, I'm just going in the 30 minute right now. The Void stuff to get this magic pen basically coming... Um, from it 40%. It will help us to clear the Udir faster. I can't reach to the back lane anyway. The other option that you could consider is Nash Rabadon, but it will take ages. Generally, the base MR of the opponents right now is quite high, around 57, 60, even for the carries, because it's 30 minutes of the game. Every level introduces your magic resist, armor, health, everything. So at this point, the base MR even is good for the void stuff to take a bit out of it, right? <laughs> I was about to say something, but I lost the topic here, I think. <coughs> ah, and now I would have so much AP from the Gathering Storm, 48, but I have cringe Scorch. The cro cro Scorch value was completely zero this game. It was terrible. This Scorch, that was like one of the worst Scorch games I ever had. But I fought it's Oriana too. But it can be as well. Playstyle situational. I, for example, prefer to outplay the opponents for the wave and consistent resets. If I played against LeBlanc, I would play with the Scorch because the guy would perma in at me. Now I'm just peeling my Wayne. Look, do you see how I do those cues? I make sure that they can't walk. And if you get too close to her, I just ult him. So we one-shot him. Kill the Gorilla, bro. Uh, of course, in League of Legends, not only in the zoo or anything. <clears throat> okay, now we need to keep top and mid pressure. I just wanted to back up those guys. If they survive, I go back mid, we push the mid. So we are splitting the pressure to the to both sides to get the best results. <clears throat> I see they are fighting on the icon on the map, so I'm gonna get it or am I gonna check? Yeah, I'm checking, look. And we will try to finish this game right now. <clears throat> okay, flash E combo, insane. L9 Malzahar player. Now we finish the game. <clears throat> and that's how you win the game that is being played from behind as a control match consistency positivity consistency positivity good mental efficiency if you want to learn more of my concepts for the control mages bot lane mid lane jungle top lane hit me up on the discord check link link in the description to get more information about me top one coach on metafight.com xbait mojo Thank you guys. Let me know how did you like the videos. Feel free to subscribe. See you next video. Was cool and fun. Bye bye. I'm going to take a second to recommend working with Explain Mojo, who has been a terrific coach. I've worked with a lot of coaches over the years. Explain is far and away one of the best. Thanks for teaching me so much, Will.